Okay. Someone who's more responsible. I filmed this class already this afternoon, and I kept on handing it to Josh, and like all set up, and then I'd come back, and then he'd start recording because he thought it was, wasn't recording. Anyways, guys, so uh, catch an angle that you can see everything as you get into it. Uh, we're going to be adding in our surrounding. Um, we're going to be looking at adding our lasso, and so. Uh, a little bit of detail or info with the lasso. This is going to be one of those things that you add to your spider game, spider spider guard game uh, that completely changes it. it. It will completely lock someone in. All of the passing that you guys just were working on last week completely gets shut down by the lasso. That's why I was adamant with the more advanced guys, like don't use your lasso when you're doing specific. For now, allow your partners a chance, okay? Um, there are certain things that you can't do with the lasso. As much as it makes your opponent get stuck into the position, you also kind of get hung up a little bit too. But it does not completely get you stuck. Um, there's other positions like you know the lockdown, for example, from half guard, where when you use it, it kind of kills your own mobility. Um, but with this, it you can still open up an attack, um, which will be seen later on in the week. Okay. Uh, uh, let's switch it up here. Let's use race. See if he panics because it's gonna be filmed. Cool. No need your mouth. All right. Okay. So we're gonna start off again. Standard spider. Okay. Get into your position. Move over to back and forth, etc. Now, bend side is going to be our lasso side. Remember, extended leg is the tension. This is the control within this position. So this is the one that I'm gonna <coughs> draw, kick and pull. And now, key thing, I need to make sure that I bring him down into the position as much as possible. So I'm chambering this arm, and I don't want to just fling my leg over the top. I elevate my hip and draw a semicircle or a circle around his arm. Now, what we're looking to do is basically maintain his wrist on the inside of my thigh, and I want my foot to be a strong hook on the back of his shoulder or armpit. Now, we can overdo this. So when I go into the position, I can kind of be a little bit loose here, and so long as I keep my foot active, this is the way I normally play the position, because I feel I have enough kind of mobility in my hip, enough flexibility to really exaggerate this flare of my knee and maintain control. But some people, if you can't really open up that knee too much and compress your leg, you may need to kick a bit deeper behind the shoulder line and then kind of control higher up here on the shoulder instead of behind the tricep. Okay, my other leg can relax a bit now, and then again, or I can keep it really exaggerated and strong. So if we just rotate a bit. So again, feet on the hips, get control, feet on, back and forth a bit, but don't overdo it. Bend or drop, pull and kick. And then I really want to pull his arm in and get nice and strong here, tie him into a knot. So the main thing that we're avoiding is his hand going behind my butt. As soon as that happens, all I have really is a grip, okay? Now, once you get this position, Come back out, set to the other side, kick and pull, find your position, release. So we're just getting in the habit of tracing the circle correctly. Most people when they're new, they go spider guard and then they'll go like this or something weird, okay? So again, the foot drops down and then it goes over the top, around the back and then to the inside again, okay? So just get in the habit and make sure that you're not you know, confusing yourself with just getting the lasso and then just feel the position, okay? Start with that. One, two. Let's do it. Quit being weird. I was gonna run at these. Back to the middle. It's already filming here. Jack's gonna use you next. Let's just switch around. All right, so a little bit of detail on control. So go into your spider. Now, I, some of you, you're a little bit square dead on here. So when you go to wrap, it's like it's, you're struggling to find the angle of the arm and then you're kicking the hand out, okay? So what I'd suggest is really exaggerate, like get your butt facing the opposite direction, like do your proper spider guard positioning, exaggerate the, the position. And then from here, now my foot's doing the whole rotation on the outside of her body. It's completely clear of any sort of resistance. Whereas from this side here, I'm just kind of awkward around her structure. Yeah. Like I'm like twisting her forearm to be able to get the position. So another way of getting into this, go off the hip line. 
Okay, put one foot in the gut, kick her away, create the, the space, and then just find the lasso. Remember, in the spider, any sort of variation of the spider, the more extended and stretched out she is, the, the weaker she's going to be and the easier it is to manipulate her arms. Okay, so make that slight adjustment. And again, always try to maintain this hand inside, okay? Pull down and wrap. At no point should you feel like you're fighting to pull the hand back in. This is a losing battle. You don't have the control, okay? Once you get in, what I want you guys to feel, both for bottom and top, but usually you'll feel it more as the person on top, I want you to just try and pull out of this position while the partner on the bottom just really bite down. Okay, and she'll just move around. She can try her traditional passing. I just want you to feel how stuck you get in this position here. Okay, she can do everything properly. She can get her knee behind my heel like we practice. Oh, oh <laughs> not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. <laughs> okay, but if she gets her knee behind here, remember the, uh, the no, no, that's the secondary one. Yeah, clear that. She's still stuck. She's still in the knot here. Okay. This will lead to you feeling a little more confident in the position and understanding how to respect the position a bit better. Okay? Get in, just fight. Key thing, guys, not magic. Yes, you've tied them up, but I can tie my belt and it'd be this loose, or I can snap it. Okay? Put that lasso on and make it strong. Okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. I'm cutting that out. Okay, guys, the time. Okay, back to the center. Let's go to our first sweep. So this is the big thing that the, um, the lasso really opens up, our true sweeps. So the scissor sweep, the momentum sweep, like there, you gotta be really slick to, to catch those. And again, you can't really do them when someone's on their feet. The lasso completely changes things, okay? You're not just controlling like the wrist and the elbow line. Like we have the whole upper body. You, you basically have posture control and you're locked into the position as you should have just felt like this is not an easy position just to like pull free of and it shouldn't be. Um, another thing you do have to respect is it's not exactly a comfortable position to be in either. Like physically it's painful. If someone's doing the tension right, like that shin driving in to your, but guys don't tap. Okay. <laughs> don't tap. Jacob. So. Our first sweep, super duper traditional, old school, everybody knows it, lasso sweep. You get your hook. I'm going to put my foot to the outside of his hip. So if you notice, my feet are on the same side, hooked in here on the outside of his body. Except one is in the armpit, elbow, tricep region, the other one is at the hip line. So a little bit of theory here, and this is something that even though Jacob knows what I'm going for, almost everybody will always fall for the trap every single time. You can't help yourself. Okay, it takes a, a pretty seasoned jiu-jitsu player to not go for the pass. Because as soon as this foot comes off, they already know this is a pain in the butt. They can't break it. So they think, I'll just go to side control. He just gave me the pass, right? Now, the key thing here is that I need to keep this knee chambered. So my foot that goes across, it can never be extended out. Unless I'm a brown belt and I can do my bicep slice, which we'll look at later. So I create the hook. As he passes, I need to make sure that both my knees come into my chest here. So I'm getting my hips alive and I'm creating a spring with my legs. As he's dropping in, I'm also reaching for his leg in a scooping motion. Now, from here, if I just illustrate the point without my grip, as I try and rock him, I'm using this grip here of my leg, how his arm's tied up, to pull his weight over my body. So this, his weight is centered at his hip line, which is where my shin is. So I'm not doing anything overdone with my inner leg here, but as I pull him on top of me, this acts as a shock absorber, so I'm not getting crushed here. Then now, right before he gets another concussion, my knee's going to push him away and I sit up. So I don't want him to do a full front roll, but my momentum has to send him that direction, okay? So we start from the beginning. Spider, lasso, create the bait, scoop. It doesn't matter if he gets a cross face or anything. And I'm going to use that momentum of him dropping. So obviously the timing will be a di bit different. My shin does not push this way. I'm not trying to push him into his base. Okay. I'm pulling him over top of me. And then right when he's about to go into that front roll, I extend my knee on the hip line and I sit up. Okay. 
Now, the quick warning before we actually do it on purpose is this position here, the bicep slicer. This is an illegal submission for us. No gi, I don't care, white belts, go for it. Uh, in the gi, follow IBJJF rules, which means brown belt and up. Um, you're allowed to go knee slicers and bicep slicers. So from here, if I'm not careful and I rotate on top, I can pop my partner's elbow. We'll get into like what's actually happening here later. Just be aware, partner on the bottom, protect yourself, hide your arm. And for me, as I come up, don't get DQ'd by something silly. Because it just takes one guy on the bottom to go, ah, in a competition. And say like, ah, oh, he did a bicep slicer. And then the ref may DQ you or maybe he'll be like, no, that was unintentional. Okay, so now the sweep itself, we're gonna do off of a static position so that you guys can feel how you can force it. Cross the foot over, scoop, and pull yourself into a perpendicular line. His spine this way and my spine this way. Now, if he's fighting me, he doesn't wanna go into the position, right? So I have to create momentum. I can't just do this, okay? I'm going to hip up, pushing him with my knee. And then as I drop, that's obviously going to pull him down. I don't want to just go straight to the floor. I go in a bit of a J. I come down, and then I swoop my hip off to the side. So hips up, create the potential energy. I drop, and then I pull him over the top of my line. Okay, so you're going to feel a little more work with this leg now. The lasso directs. This one carries. Now, key detail, when you hit resistance, instead of scooping low, do your best to pull his knee across the line of your chest. That will really help carry his weight over when you hit that again resistance. Hips up, drop and cross, and he's, you feel a little bit of resistance. Keep pulling his knee over you. And then finish the same way. I can, with momentum, you'll land right in knee on belly potentially. Or again, drop down side control. Or the last option, is to go for a sneaky but shitty arm bar. So pull to here again. He's not just going with it. Hips up, drop and cross, and bail. Pull him right in. Right. His hips are anchored, so he's going to spin himself head leading towards the arm bar, which is never the best angle for the arm bar because he's really close to the hitch. Okay. okay. So work on that from a static position, and we'll start to find the timing out. Okay? Watch. Timing now. So partner on top, we're gonna need a little bit of action here. Uh, Jared? Click the button, right? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> the little red. I know, I'm, I'm kidding. I was trying to joke. Jared, can you see it? Okay, so again, the, the goal here, and as you guys will feel, as you start to be attacked by this effectively, as you get frustrated with this position, you will take whatever is sort of thrown your way, right? Any bone that I throw, the problem is it's a cooked chicken bone and a choke you, okay? Not a choke you, I'll sweep you. So, again, I cross my foot over, and I know, I know he realizes there's nothing to this side. So almost everybody, they dive to get past your leg, and they go for that cross face. So I don't stop and wait. I use that momentum to actually sweep him. So I cross my leg, I know he's coming, and then I just use that momentum. Just swing your hip and finish, okay? So partners, don't stop. You do exactly what you did before, except you don't actually have to pump your hip up to create the momentum. Just cross the foot, partner's gonna drop in, and just redirect them. Just take them right over, okay? Very simple. It'll feel easy, okay? So, let's look at the actual bicep slicer. So again, this is illegal for everybody except for brown belts, or again, yogi, you can absolutely go for this, or brown black belt. Um, but I feel like this is one of those things where if you know what you're trying to do to a call, like if you're actually attacking it, it's easier to avoid what's going on, okay? Um, ah, sure, that's right. I keep switching it up. All right, so if I'm successful on my sweep, so my leg comes through, whether or not he's dropping in on me or I'm forcing the sweep, when we get on top here, okay? Make sure you guys can see what's going on with the arm. 
So I need to make sure again that this wrist is sort of stuck. So what I'm looking to do here, my knee drives to the floor, my foot stays heavy. I'm just gonna try and keep this as open as possible. So I'm rolling forward here. I'm stapling over the top of his bicep, nice and tight to the elbow. And then similar to finishing the omoplata, I'm rolling my hip into the wrist here to create the pinch. So his arm wants to do this, right? But my shin's in the way, so it's getting pinched. So it's very, very painful. Now, this is one of those things where sometimes people think, oh, it's just pain if I just grip my teeth, like nothing will happen. If this is your elbow, and it's closing and it can't close anymore, that's going to happen, okay? And this has happened in MMA before a guy got caught, which I'm gonna show you the variation of it. But this elbow will basically just split open the other way. Now, in judo, this is a per completely legal technique. Straight arm bar separates the elbow by hyperextending it and then the joint coming apart like this. The bicep slicer does it this way. So it's still sep a move separating the elbow. So for them, it's completely legal. For us, for whatever reason, I think it's just a bit terrifying to think of your elbow like splitting open like a mouth like that. Um, so I would definitely rather have this happen to me, okay? But that's the risk. So don't just be like, oh, I'm just not gonna <laughs> tap, okay? You can have some damage. So one more time on that. Complete your sweep. Okay, boom. I come on top, so I keep this nice and tight. I make sure that I'm kind of over my ankle more than the knee. And then I just roll through and you can grab a cross face and underhook and then just basically roll that hip in and it doesn't take much. Okay, now in some opinions, this is even worse. Off the bottom, and this is where in Nogi you're gonna find this opportunity a lot and especially MMA because of the gloves, you can get a pretty good grip on the wrist. But let's say I make a mistake or he effectively clears my leg and he passes. My sweep is going to be nearly impossible from here, right? Like I, I don't have anything to pull him through. But this hand here, if I reach through the armpit and catch the shoulder, and my other hand doubles up, the same grip I'd use to finish the triangle. I triangle here, and then now all I'm going to do, if you watch his body, I'm just going to extend my hips away from me, okay? I'm going to tap. So open your body, right? Here, okay? So if he stands up as I do this, like he takes the pressure off, right? And eventually his hand will slide out, which is why if you come back. If I grab here and here, now he can't create separation, so I'm keeping this pinched. And then now as I hip in, oh, sorry. <laughs> now I'm tapping. Now you can tap, okay? <laughs> so you're doing this pull and I hip into it. You get way more extension than what you do from on top. Okay, so this is like actually for Nogi, it's a, a really nice option. And you can get it kind of sneaky like. Okay, so don't let people mess around with your wrists. Right, anybody need a repeat on that or are we good? Watch the video later when it goes on. So good. Okay? So try both from top, finish your sweep, and then second one, clear the leg. Bop, bop. Except no sound please. Okay. One, two. Let's go. Thank you. So again, this was um, this this was uh, just for your awareness. Okay, because again, you start feeling that pressure, not like you just go like, well, he's not really attacking me, but sometimes you have to tap like shit happens. You need to know when to protect yourself, right? Pain is, is the precursor to injury. So um, let me just show you one other thing here. Let me just grab Jared quick. So this happened, we showed this sweep to the kids actually today, and a couple of the kids did this. It was pretty smart of them. As the kid on the bottom was looking to try and sweep them, they stepped over the head. So as I was going here, like this was happening. Okay, so effectively countering because I can't swing them this way anymore. But, there, so if you step back. Key thing with jujitsu, I've say, said this many, many times, is that there are many what ifs, some are valid, some aren't. Okay, like if I'm here in my lasso and his way of avoiding it is falling onto his shoulder, like just falling onto the floor, he's like, you can't sweep me now. It's like, well, yeah, okay, but I'm just gonna own plot or et cetera, right? But this is like a good, like, no, this is valid, right? I go for my sweep, everything's correct, he steps over. So what do I do now? Definitely, hopefully not panic. But from here, we've got like that baby bolo finish. But he put himself into another option. In our jiu-jitsu grappling, there's no pure unwinnable counter. There's no unwinnable, there's just like fully locked out or fully sunken choke and you're there can't get out anymore you've lost too many 
steps in a row, okay? Um, so if that happens, is if they, they turn their back, they step over you, you're right there from the back. We won't work on that, but I just wanna kind of throw that mentality there. Um, so from this position, I want you guys to really hunt to now set up that lasso. You will really start to enjoy it and your partner will start to hate you. Um, and that's a good thing, okay? Because this is a really, really strong, like if you're tired and someone's really good at passing, if you put them in the lasso, even if they're really good at passing, it's still hard work. And we will learn how to deal with this lasso in a bit, okay? Uh, so regular rolls, because we went long on technique, but we've introduced the position. Moving forward through the week, it's just gonna be moves, okay? So we'll get some more training in. All right, guys, that's eight. That's eight. One, two, three. You know what I mean. Rolling! <laughs>